Eric Darling here uh, with Eric Darling Data. Having a grand old time. There was some sort of thunderstorm going on outside. <coughs> so hopefully, <laughs> uh, if, if you get sick of listening to me, you can just tune out and listen to the, the lovely white noise machine uh, storm that is currently brewing on the East Coast. Uh, in this video, we want to look at uh, how I set up some performance troubleshooting um, things, <laughs> what to call them, uh, captures, trap, I don't know, whatever, uh, in SP underscore 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 quickie store. Uh, so the first thing that you might notice is uh, a parameter that you can pass into SP quickie store called troubleshoot performance, and that it is a bit uh, which defaults to zero because uh, you don't want it turned on by default, I don't think. Now, uh, one of the first things that uh, I do is uh, declare a couple parameters here. Oh, wait, actually, there's something else that I do up here that I think I might have uh, just skipped past a little bit, is I have a logging table uh, for uh, things that I want to log uh, as queries run to capture information about them. Uh, it's a pretty simple table. It's an uh, identity. The current table, which we saw in the last video, is where I used to figure out where I am in the world. Uh, start time and end time, and then a computed column that tells me the number of milliseconds between start time and end time. And I do format that number to stick some commas in it, just in case uh, things get uh, on the long side and we want to figure out the exact scale and whatnot of things. Um, and then uh, the next thing I do is I declare a couple variables to hold uh, dynamic SQL. And it's not terribly dynamic SQL. And this section really is only here to uh, shorten the number of, uh, shorten the code a little bit. Um, you know, like the I have, if you go down to where the code actually lives, uh, I have uh, right down here an insert that uh, puts data into a, uh, uh, the, into that temp table, the troubleshoot performance temp table, and uh, that passes in the current table thing. And then I have an update that updates the end time where the current table equals a current table. And so this is what allows me to figure out how long a statement ran for. But that's not all that I do. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further, uh, what I do in all of these blocks, and I guess I could, I could go back a little bit. So the reason that I have this part set up in dynamic SQL is because uh, I and just in case I want to add more columns to the table and more stuff that I want to log, I only have to ch I, I have to make minimal changes to do that. I don't have to find every time I would do that insert and change it. I can just change the one insert and the one update, and then I can go get, you know, I can just plop that in there, and it executes the new SQL and all, all the places that I care about. Uh, so the next place, next thing that it does, is uh, if troubleshoot performance is set to one, uh, then I will fire off that dynamic SQL block. Uh, with the current table that I'm working on, which again, that gets set right here to tell me which block of code I'm in. And then uh, I set statistics XML on. So this is a command that I can use to capture query plans that I care about. Like, so if I care, like, you know, like if I'm troubleshooting performance, you know, I don't want to just set uh, statistics XML on for the whole procedure because it's going to capture a bunch of nonsense. It's going to capture a bazillion things. I don't need that. The only things that I care about, the statements that I know that might hit issues, are ones that go and touch the query store views, because those are the ones that are uh, subject to the awful design and indexing and implementation of query stores views. Sorry, it's just the truth. They, they suck. That's why I wrote this, because every time I had to, every time I was working with a client, I'd be like, ah, how do I do that in query store again? It would just be like this, this process. It's, uh not something that you shouldn't have to deal with stuff like this. this this stuff shouldn't be harder than it already is like it's hard enough dealing with sql server performance a million different things that go wrong just finding out what went wrong shouldn't be as hard as it is so uh this will set statistics statistics xml on and then after the code runs right we see the sp execute c will find uh, see if the query store exists. Uh, then if troubleshoot, again, troubleshoot performance one being set to on, the first thing I do is turn query plans off. Now, the reason I do this in here is because I don't care about the query plan for inserting into the temp table. All I care about is the query plan for inserting into the uh, query store exists thing, right? And then, so if this is uh, troubleshoot performance is set to one, then I set statistics XML back off, and then I run the update to update the current time and place and all the other good fun things that are in there. Now, uh, 
I can't remember if I had recreated this since I added that, but uh, what I'll show you what it looks like real quick. So if, if you hit uh, troubleshoot performance, then you will get back. Um, it doesn't perform terribly on my computer because my computer doesn't have a lot of query star data in it, but other people uh, are going to have a tougher time. So uh, first thing you get back is this set of things that will show you uh, the query plans for the queries that executed uh, in the parts of the store procedure that we might care about performance in. Uh, there are kind of a lot of them, and it's, it's a little annoying that um, the, since we're executing dynamic SQL to do an insert, uh, for a lot of these things, what you're going to see is uh, this pr insert query from a parameter scan. And I can't really do a lot about that. Um, you know, like I, we see this is the query that ran that w like we pulled data from. But then, like the insert that we did to pull the results of it, that is a separate execution plan. So it's a little annoying. It is a little sort of, you know, a little bit more data than I'd want to return from the query plans. But uh, there's not a lot I can do about that. Then once you get past the end of the query plans, uh, something that is a little bit more helpful to at least help you figure out which plans you should focus on is the results of that table that show... Um, how long each one of the steps ran for. Now, of course, my query store is not in terrible shape, so you know things turn out okay here for me. Uh, if I can just make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. Uh, I have all of the steps that, uh, that my procedure hit when it ran. This might look different for you if you use different parameters, uh, search for different things, exclude different things. Uh, but this is what it looks like. We see the start time and end time. We see how long each one took. And then we can kind of say, okay, well, you know, this, you know, this is the sixth one down. It, you know, took 20 milliseconds. Oh boy, we better call the police. And then we can, you know, kind of uh, get a feel for where in this we should start looking. And one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, it's not going to be exact because we're going to have to deal with the, the separate insert plans, but we can at least start to figure out where things might have taken 20, 20 milliseconds and start focusing on that. So anyway, uh, that was kind of a neat thing that I thought, uh, the, the neat extra for this. Uh, I do anticipate people having weird problems with query store performance, uh, searching some of this stuff, you know, especially if your query store is uh, very active or very large, uh, then you're most likely going to hit some oddities trying to query it. I just it's been my experience dealing with query store data, even using the GUI. Like this is this isn't supposed to be a replacement for the GUI. This is an alternative to the GUI because even when I use the GUI uh, to access some of the reports, whether it's regress queries, like you know top resource consumer stuff like that, it it, it it's it's very 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 slow sometimes. So anyway, that's my story there. That's how I implemented performance troubleshooting into this. And, you know, if you run into performance issues, you get the query plans back, you know, maybe you see something that I messed up, something I could do better, you know, feel free to let me know on GitHub. You know, that's where I do all my, uh, you, know, um, you know, troubleshooting, stuff like that. So feel free to let me know there. Uh, be happy to take any feedback from the general public. Otherwise, it's just me kind of feeling lonely working on this stuff. Anyway, uh, that's my video about implementing performance troubleshooting. In the next one, we'll look at how I implemented passing lists of strings into the store procedure in a safe way. So uh, that's what we'll cover next. And the final video in the series will be how I implemented debugging. So crazy, fun, sexy times for, for you and me ahead. Choo-choo. Yeah. <laughs> that carpet's on fire. All right. Uh, I'm going to go now. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves and learned things. And um, I will see you over in the next video.